Hello there, science friends, and welcome once again to Photoshop for the Scientist. Uh, the first of 2017, actually. And I apologize for being a little slow on the video releases over the past couple of months. Uh, believe it or not, I do have a life outside of Photoshop for the Scientist. <laughs> no, I don't. I've, I've just been lazy. Ugh, jeez. Anyways, uh, so in today's video, uh, actually, before I get to that, I usually save this for the end, but uh, why not at the beginning today? So I'm just going to take a minute to... Um, promote my Patreon channel, which uh, right now I've only been able to coerce people that I know in real life to support me on Patreon. So if you're out there and you like these videos, uh, it'd be really nice if you might be able to hop on over to Patreon and kick in just, you know, a dollar per month or a dollar per video. It'd be nice to see if there was some support out there for Photoshop for the Scientist. And uh, it would also help me uh, keep the videos going and it might even allow me to invest in a microphone that's worth more than the four dollars I paid for this one. Um, that said, this, this microphone's been pretty good to me. But anyways, I if you're like me, and you probably watch a lot of YouTube videos, and you think, yeah, this is a video or a channel that I like, I, I should help this guy out. And then you just kind of don't. Uh, why not uh, take the extra step and, and just head over to Patreon and see what it's all about? Um, that would be that would be nice. But anyways, don't feel like you have to. I'm just saying it's there if you want. Anyways, enough of that. So let's get back to the video here. So in today's video, what I want to show you how to do is take a bunch of individual images. So in this case, I think there's about 30. Um, and what I've done here is I've taken a bunch of immunofluorescence images that are probably about that big. And I've just taken them kind of overlapping uh, bit by bit. And then what we're going to use is a tool inside Photoshop to automatically merge them. And I remember when I first did this, uh, I took all of the images and then because I didn't really know what I was doing, I just sat down and aligned them kind of manually one by one and then used the eraser tool to erase any kind of like overlapping areas. Uh, and it took forever. Uh, I was pretty happy with myself when I was done, um, but I never actually published this stuff, so it was all a giant waste of time. But uh, be that as it may, uh, the fact is there's a tool inside Photoshop that will do it for you, so hopefully you can use it and be more successful than I had been in my scientific career. So first we need to close this. Uh, this is just what we're going for. So I'm going to get rid of it. And what we want to do is go up to File and say Automate and say Photo Merge. It brings up this box here. And working through it here, so in the layout, uh, we can leave it at Auto. That would be fine. But I'm just going to go to Reposition. And so because these are just microscopy images, we don't need to worry about any kind of like photo distortion or camera distortion or anything like anything like that. Uh, which I would imagine this is what this tool is probably normally for if you're taking like a uh, panorama or like a big landscape photo or something. Um, but it turns out it's also great for microscopy images. But anyways, uh, if we look down here, we do want to have blend images together checked because that's going to uh, blend all of our, well, it's going to blend all our images together. Um, in some cases, there might be some like edge effects or maybe even some vignetting from the microscope that we want to get rid of. Uh, we want to leave content aware fill transparent areas unchecked because we don't want Photoshop making up our data for us because I guess that's frowned upon. And for source files, uh, you can say folder or files. I'm just going to say files, but it's probably best if you're going to do this to keep all of your individual files just in a single folder just to help keep things organized. So if you click browse, I'm just going to, my folder's already, or files already here, so I'm just going to select them all and say OK. And like I said, I've got about 30 individual files here. Um, when I was working on this technique earlier today, I think I tried to do it with like 68. Uh, and Photoshop just said nope uh, and crashed. So apparently there is some kind of limit and, uh, to what you can do here. And apparently it's between 30 and 68. Um, but I think that also probably depends on how powerful your computer is. So uh, just be aware that if you're really trying to do something massive that um, your computer might not be happy with you. But anyways, uh, I'm going to say OK. And you can see here, so these are my images individually. Uh, I think they're maybe 20x or so. Um, but what is happening is that Photoshop is loading all of the images into a stack here. After it does that, it's going to use some kind of like fancy background math to align all of the images. And then after that, it's going to use layer masks to blend them all together. So I'll probably just pause and skip through while it does all this, because it's going to take a minute or two, um, obviously depending on how powerful your computer is. Um, so for now, feel free to, or when you're doing it yourself, you might want to go grab a cup of coffee or maybe stare aimlessly into your keyboard. 
Um, but yeah, I'll see you in a few seconds. Okie dokie. So we're back here, and you can see that Photoshop's done actually a pretty terrific job of taking these individual files and building them into uh, this mouse brand here, is what I've imaged. Uh, you can see there are a few images here where Photoshop has said thanks, but no thanks, um, which is fine. But there are some little breaks here, which we're going to have to do manually, uh, which that's just how it goes. So let's take a look here. I'm going to zoom in. And let's start at the top of the brain here. So I think the image that we're looking for is probably this guy. So I'm just going to use my move tool and I'm going to make sure that this uh, select layer, yeah, here we go, automatically select group or layer by clicking is selected. And then I'm just, actually, I need to click off to deselect all these layers and then click this guy. And I'm just going to drag him over. Uh, I might reduce the opacity slightly just to 95 so I can see what I'm doing as I line things up. And I'm also actually going to drag this to the top of the stack here so that it's just on top of everything. And just kind of drag it down. Maybe I'll zoom in a little bit more. And ultimately I'm just trying to line up kind of these landmarks uh, which I can't actually really see. So I'm going to reduce the opacity a little more. But basically, you know, you want to take your time doing this. Uh, I'm going to kind of do a quick and dirty way uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. whatever. I'm sticking with that because it's just boring to watch me resize things. Uh, I'm going to increase my opacity back to 100% and you can see now that I've got kind of this like hard edge along here. So this is what I was saying how Photoshop will use the blending uh, to make things sort of fit together nicer. And I'm just going to do that manually now with the paintbrush and on the layer mask here. And you want to make sure your default colors are set to black and white because we want to be painting in this black mask. And then I'm just going to use a soft edge. And I'm just going to sort of paint away this hard edge here so things kind of blend together a little nicer. And I haven't lined things up perfectly, so that's a bit off. So as I said, you probably want to take your time with that. Uh, it looks kind of like here uh, it's poorly lined up, but that's just because I had a very poor sectioning technique. Um, I did see that I inadvertently painted away some of that, so I'm just going to fix that with a reverse mask with the white instead of the black. And that's fine, uh, enough for my purposes. Uh, if I just take another look around here, maybe we're missing a spot here, so I'm going to look down. What are we looking for? I think probably this guy. So again, I'm just going to use my move tool to bring this uh, individual image back up here. I'm going to move it up to the top, again, like my other one, just so I can see it on top of everything else, uh, what I'm doing. And again, reduce my opacity, maybe. Let's go down to 89. Zoom in again. Really nothing fancy going on here, just trying to, like, line things up the best I can. You know what? I don't want to mess around too much, so I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh, reduce the opacity, or bring the opacity back up to 100%. Use my brush to brush away the edge using the mask. I uh, want to make sure that I'm actually using the right color. Sort of just nice and easy. Again, it doesn't look like I've done an amazing job lining it up, but you know, I'm sure you, the viewer, will do a better job than me. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Anyways, uh, okay, so now we've got kind of like the full composite image, uh, which I think I'm pretty happy with. And we don't really need these extra extra guys. Um, I guess I just took too many when I was doing my imaging. So I'm just going to drag this one out of the way and I'm going to use my crop tool to crop down to the composite. And so I've set uh, the crop tool to delete crop pixels which normally I recommend you don't do but in this case I know that I don't need any of that stuff so I'm just going to get rid of it to uh, reduce my file size because I think this file is going to be pretty big. Um, so this looks good. It looks about how I want it so I'll say OK. Great. And so the next thing I want to do is I have this now layers panel, which is full of all of these different layers. And uh, I don't know, it can be a little much. So what I want to do is to bring them all together into a uh, smart object. So I will just select them all by shift clicking. Then I'll say, I'll right click it and I'll say convert to smart object. And so basically this just breaks everything down into a single layer um, that can be uh, Manipulate. I don't want to say manipulated, but can be whatever. I'm just going to say manipulated. Uh, and 
of course, if as with all smart objects, if I ever did want to go back in and sort of maybe nudge some of these images around or whatever, I can just double click it, which I, oh yeah, there we go. And then it just brings it right back to all these images, but I'll close that for now. And so probably the first thing I'm going to want to do is put in a black background. So I'm just going to create a new layer, drag it to the bottom, and I already have black selected here. So I'm just going to hit Alt Backspace. Uh, Sorry, that's Alt Backspace to fill with my foreground color, which is black. And uh, yeah, this is starting to take shape. And what I might want to do now, because I have sort of like this background uh, standing, I want to sort of drop that out a bit. So I'm going to use the layers, uh, um, what the heck is this? Adjustment layer, yep. And I'm just going to sort of bring up the black point and bring down the white point. But again, you always want to be careful when you're doing this because uh, you don't want to be accused of any sort of uh, image manipulation and I implore you to go and watch my videos on the ethics of photoshopping your data um, but for now I'm just going to sort of move these around until I find something that I'm happy with I think that's looking pretty nice actually and so maybe I'll just zoom in a bit and we can see now we've got this gigantic image which is a uh, very high resolution if I go into 100% uh, how do I do 100% here? Come on. Whatever, I'm just going to keep zooming in like this. You can see we've got a pretty nice amount of detail here, down to almost the cellular level, because I was taking images at uh, 20x. But then we can zoom into the full image and see it all together. Uh, yeah, so I think that that's pretty much it. Um, so again, if you have any questions or comments, as always, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I know basically nobody ever does, but, you know, I just get so excited when I get a comment. Um, unless it's a mean one, then then just my feelings are hurt. But anyways, uh, what else do I normally say at the end of these videos? I don't know. I don't remember. Uh, head on over to Patreon if you want to become a supporter of Photoshop for the Scientist. And I guess for now, or until next time... You worked hard to get that data, potentially by taking hundreds or dozens of little tiny photographs. So why not uh, work a little harder and learn how to put them together automatically? Okay, that's it for today, folks. Thanks for watching, and I will see you all next time.